Hello everyone, and welcome to the very first inaugural episode of the Homemade Game Guru. My name is Loong Nwambi, I'll be your host in this monthly series on showing you innovative and imaginative ways to make your own toys and games with stuff from around your house and from your local store. So let's get started with this first one, the Geo Puzzle. I'll show you how to make your very own puzzle with your very own pictures. Let's get started. Now the joy of puzzles is that they can be used in a multitude of ways. They are great educational tools not only but for you know, training the mind with a concentration and a challenge to bring them together. It's a great bonding tool for parents and kids and even families just to talk and converse. And there's just a multiple amount of uses. And of course puzzles now come in three dimensional versions. They're made out of wood, plastic, or cardboard. But what I'm going to do is show you something a little bit different where you can make your own puzzle pretty much out of any picture that you have. So you're probably asking yourself, just how are we going to make puzzles out of pictures when we don't have a die cutter because that's how these kind of pieces are made. They're made with a die cutting machine. Well, we don't need to use these irregular shapes. We're going to use something that starts with a dreaded G. The G word known to most elementary school kids is geometry. But don't worry about it. This is going to be fun and easy geometry using simple shapes. So when you're deciding what you actually want to make into a puzzle, really think about the picture that you would like. You could look at old family photos of uh, ancestors and relatives, kind of a genealogy twist to it. Your favorite paintings or pieces of artwork. Your direct family, here's my nieces and nephews. Baby pictures, either that of your own or someone you know. Your family pets, also a great subject. And you could even look at your friends as well. After you decided which picture you would like to use for your puzzle, I recommend blowing it up to about 8.5 by 11 size. When you do blow it up, you will have a white border that's going around the picture, which is perfect for setting up the grid lines when we are actually drawing it out. But once you have your picture chosen, the only other materials that you will need is a pencil. I recommend a mechanical pencil because of the very light lines that it will create. But you can also use a regular pencil with eraser or a pen if you're very confident in the lines that you're going to make. A normal ruler, a pair of scissors, and some adhesive. I recommend using spray glue, but you could also use normal white glue as well. And of course, Bristol board that you could get at any dollar store or arts and crafts store. For this first geo puzzle, the design we're going to use is what I call the standard grid, which is using simple squares and rectangles for the image. So for the image that we show right here, my painting, we're going to use a simple square format in order to make the final puzzle. Now what we need, again, is the mechanical pencil and the ruler. So what we do is using the inches, we use it around the border, just using the inches, you plot out where you would like the lines to start. So as you can see, this is an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go by the, the half points. So every half inch, I'm just going to make a little mark. That's about it. Just right across. One little mark. So nine and a half, eight and a half, seven, all the way down. And then I'll just leave that space there. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing on the top part. In the white space that's there, again, copying the same type of motion. So there we go. Every half inch. Once we got our lines on both top and bottom, the next thing we need to do is join them. And to do that, all you have to do, again, is just put your ruler, put them connecting the two lines. So we have the one little notch up there, the one little notch down here. And you just use your pencil, line them up, and just draw a line right across. So there, we got the horizontal, uh, sorry, the vertical lines going on the piece. Now all we need to do is the horizontal lines. It's the exact same process, the exact simple thing to do. Again, set it up. It doesn't matter what intervals you use, if you want to use half an inch, a full inch, three quarters of an inch. The main thing is that you do the same thing for the top as it is for the bottom. So, you know, because this is 11 inches, 11 inch piece of paper, I'm going to do this by full inches. The vertical lines are by half an inch. I'm going to do the horizontal lines by a full inch. So now that we have the lines on our image, the next major step is to have it glued down onto the Bristol board. 
And as I mentioned before, like I just have normal white bristle board here. It's been cut down into a square size. As long as it will fit the eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, that's all that really matters. I just make it a little bit bigger, just in case. Now what you do, and again, you could use any color that you wish. I just prefer to use the white bristle board. Now what you do is you, on the back of the image or on the bristle board itself, that's where you place the glue. Now I use spray glue. You can use any type of glue that you wish. You could use white glue, carpenter's glue, glue stick. But the downfall of those choices is that glue stick is not permanent. It will, the image will start flaking off the bristle board if you use glue stick. If you use white glue, it might cause bubbling and lumps to form on the back of the image. So when you actually glue it down, eventually it will stick, but it'll also get lumpy and you prefer it to be smooth. So what I recommend is using spray glue. Now there's multiple spray glues out there and what I would like to stress most of all is if it's young kids who want to do this, I, I ask parents to be the ones to use the spray glue because many of them have strong smells to them and you want to make sure that it's done in a well ventilated area and with supervision because also the because it's an aerosol the spray will get around and will get onto clothing and so you just want to make sure things are safe. So now that the image is nicely glued down onto the Bristol board what we're going to do is cut out the perimeter of the image. We're not going to cut the lines and make the finished puzzle yet because I want to show you one extra step that will make this puzzle even more fun and more challenging. But for now we're just going to cut out the perimeter of the puzzle just so what is left is in the middle. So now we're at the stage where our puzzle is almost done. It's now cut out with guidelines and it's glued onto the Bristol board. But I decided that we're going to add one little extra touch to this just to make it more challenging. We're going to add a new dimension or namely another side to it. As I showed you before that I had multiple pictures that I could have used and I wanted to also add in my nieces and nephews into this puzzle and to give the puzzle a little bit more of a challenge. So what I did, just like I did with the original photo, is that I blew up the picture to 8.5 by 11, I glued it on to a piece of Bristol board and then cut it around the border. And once that is done, what I'm going to do with the original image that has the cut lines on it, I'm going to put them front to back and that's going to become the final puzzle. So now we have our final image all glued together. We have the front and the back all glued onto two pieces of Bristol board and as you can see it's very stiff, very sturdy. Now the final stage is cutting it. Now that taking the side that has the lines, you simply cut it any way you feel is the best way. So after you're completed cutting out the entire puzzle, there you have it. One eight and a half by 11 piece of paper that's now become a puzzle consisting of 165 pieces based on a one inch by half an inch pieces. And even if you compare this to your average puzzle piece, you can see there's really not that much of a difference. Average puzzle piece is just a little bit bigger. But pretty much you have a fun and challenging puzzle that of course has two sides to it. You have the one picture, and here is the other side of the image. Again, with the small individual pieces when flipped over. So there you have it, your very own geo puzzle made with simple rectangular shapes. Enough pieces to equal that of any jigsaw puzzle, except this one includes your own images in a double sided format. So I hope you found this very informative and fun and that you enjoy the process. And I always like to state that uh, for the parents out there, that if you have young kids uh, that's doing this, that you work with them, especially with the scissors, the cutting, and the gluing, just make it a, a whole family process and to make sure that everyone's safe doing this. And if you go onto my website, which is homemadegameguru.com, I also have a video on how to make a cardboard enclosure. Since these are not interlocking pieces, I show you how to make just out of glue and cardboard, how to make an enclosure so when the puzzle is finished you just need an enclosure and it stays in place. And again that's on my website homemadegameguru.com.